What's going on guys? Chew here with the Slimefoot the Stowaway Commander deck tech. Um, this is a deck I've been working on for a bit. It's mostly foil. I've been kind of collecting cards for it over the past few years. Um, and it's kind of a more casual deck that kills our opponents with sapperlings and fungus creatures and different sacrifice effects. But anyway, let's get into the deck. Alright guys, so I got my playmat set up here and I'm going to start us off with the one drops. So first of all we have Llanowar Elves. Llanowar Elves is a one drop uh, that just taps for a green mana. Just an efficient mana creator. And then we have a Thalid. So at the beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore Counter on Thalid. Uh, and then remove three Spore Counters, and you can put a 1-1 Sapperling into play. And then we have a Utopia Micon. Utopia Micon is a 0-2 Fungus for 1. And says at the beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore Counter. And then you can remove three Spore Counters from him and put a 1-1 Sapperling into play. And then you can sacrifice a Sapperling to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, this is a great ramp and sacrifice effect for our deck. Uh, just a really solid creature for us. Then we have Carry On Feeder. So Carry On Feeder is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black that can't block, and then you can sacrifice a creature. You can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him. Then we have Tuckatunk Thalid. Uh, whenever Tuckatunk Thalid is put into a graveyard from play, put a 1-1 one, one Sapperling. Uh, so he's just a 1-1 one, one that when he dies creates a Sapperling, so he's a really effective for our sacrifice effects. That finishes up our one drops. And now for our two drops here, we have Corosa Guild Mage. So Corosa Guild Mage costs two, one black and one green for a two, two. And you can pay one colorless black green and give a target creature plus one, plus one and intimidate. And you can pay two black green and sacrifice a creature and put X green sapperlings into play or where X is a sacrifice creature's toughness. Then we have Zulaport Cutthroat. Zulaport Cutthroat. Um, is a 1-1 one, one for 2, and whenever him or another creature dies, uh, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. So we have Spore Crown Thalid. Um, Spore Crown Thalid is a 2-2 two, two for 2, and says each other creature that's a Fungus or a Sapperling gets plus 1, plus 1. Winding Constrictor. Winding Constrictor is a 2-3 two, for 2. If one or more counters will be placed on an artifact or creature you control, place one or more of those counters. Uh, and then if you would get one or more counters, uh, you get one extra counter. Then we have Thalid Shell Dweller, so it's an 0-5 for 2 with Defender. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you get a Spore Counter on it, and then you can remove three Spore Counters to make a 1-1 Sapperling. Just another great Sapperling creator. That finishes up with our two drops, and we'll get onto our three drops here. So we have Deathbloom Thalid. Deathbloom Thalid is a 3-2 for 3, and uh, whenever he dies, you get a 1-1 Sapperling. Yavimaya Shepherd. So Yavimaya Shepherd uh, enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1 Sapperling creature. We have Flesh Plague Marauder, so he's a 3-1 for 3, and when he enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Minister of Pain is a 2-3 uh, three for 3 with Exploit. You can exploit a creature, so sacrifice a creature, and then all other creatures get minus 1, minus 1. Kuan says, uh, at the end of your turn, if 3 or more creatures were put into graveyards this turn, flip Kuan. And then the other side says, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, each player sacrifices a creature. So this is just a great static effect, and you can just sacrifice small creatures while your other opponents are sacrificing larger creatures. Then we have Bontu. Um, Bontu is a 4-6 for 3 with Menace and Indestructible, uh, and he can't attack or block unless a creature has died, and then you can pay 1 black and sacrifice a creature. Each opponent loses 1 life, and you gain 1 life, and you scry 1. Uh, so this is just a big early creature you can play on three, and then we're sacrificing a lot of creatures, so you can activate him pretty easily. Then we have Thalid Germinator. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore Counter on Thalid Germinator, and then you can remove three Spore Counters and make a 1-1 one, one Sapperling. Uh, and then you can sacrifice a Sapperling to give a creature plus one, plus one. And he's just a 2-2 two, two for three. You'll notice we have a lot of these uh, Spore Counter uh, creatures in our deck. Then we have Manglehorn, which is a great card in EDH. Uh, Manglehorn is a 2-2 two, two for 3, and he says whenever he enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, and artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So moving on to our 4 drops here, we have Spore Thrower Thalid, on each fungus you control, so all fungus on the board. And then you can remove uh, 3 Spore Counters from him to make a 1-1 one, one Sapperling, and he's a 4-4 four, four for 4. Then we have Gerard, so uh, Gerard's a 2-2 two, two for black, black, green, green. And he gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. And then you can uh, sacrifice a creature, and each opponent loses life equal to the sacrificed creature's power. And then you can also, if he's in your graveyard, sacrifice a swamp and a forest and return him from your graveyard to your hand. So he's just a great card that you can get back from the graveyard pretty easily, and then he also can sacrifice stuff. 
And then we have Falcon Wrath Noble. So Falcon Wrath Noble is a 2 2 flyer for 4. And whenever uh, Falcon Wrath Noble or another creature dies, uh, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, Thalonite Hermit's an interesting card. So he's a morph. Uh, so you can pay 3 and play him as a 2 2 face down. Uh, and then when he's turned face up, you get 4 Sapperlings, and all Sapperlings also get plus 1 plus 1. So he's a surprise Sapperling Lord that you can turn up and get a bunch of 2 2s as long as he's on the battlefield. Just a really interesting and fun card. Pitiless Plunderer is an interesting card. Um, so he's a 1-4 for 4, and whenever a creature you control dies, you get a colorless treasure token that you can sacrifice uh, and get any kind of mana. Is a 5-7 uh, for 4, and he's indestructible. And if you're Devotion to Black, less than 5, he's not a creature. Um, but he is an active creature if you have 5 Black Devotion, and your opponents can't gain life, and then you can uh, pay 1 and Black and pays you life and draw a card. Um, he's just a great static effect for our deck. All right, now we have our uh, five and bigger. First, we have Spore Mound. So for five, uh, Spore Mound is a 3-3 three, three and says whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one Sapperling token. And then we have Acidic Slime, which is a great EDH card. It's a 2-2 two, two Death Touch for five. And then whenever it enters the battlefield, you can destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Just a really effective card for destroying anything in EDH. And we have Michaeloth. Michaeloth has Devour too, and he's a 4-4. Whenever he enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice any number of creatures and uh, add two plus one plus one counters to him. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, uh, you get one one green sapperlings equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on him. So if he sits on the board, you can just generate a bunch of sapperlings. Then we have Sidisi, Undead Vizier. Um, so Sidisi is a 4-6 for six with Death, Death Touch Exploit. Um, and if you exploit a creature, then you can pretty much Demonic Tutor, which is a really useful creature. And then plus being a 4-6 with Death Touch, it's just a really effective creature for 5. And then obviously we can sacrifice Sapperlings to Tutor. And then we have Tendershoot Dryad. So Tendershoot Dryad's a 2-2 for 5 with Ascend. Uh, at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 Sapperling. And then if you have Ascend, which uh, if you have 10 or more permanents, which is pretty easy to get in this deck, Sapperlings you control get plus 2, plus 2. Um, so this is just a really effective creature that can take over the game pretty quickly. And then lastly, we have Verdaloth the Ancient. So Verdaloth the Ancient has Kicker X. Um, and whenever he comes into play, if the Kicker was paid, you get X green Sapperlings. And then uh, he also gives all Sapperlings and Tree Folks plus one, plus one. And then for our last creature, we have Verdant Force. So Verdant Force is a 7-7 seven, seven for 7. And then the beginning of each upkeep, you get a 1-1 one, one Sapperling creature. Uh, just another really effective creature for our deck. All right, so now we have our instants and sorceries. First, we have Sap Sapperling Migration. So Sapperling Migration is a 2-cost sorcery. And uh, it says create two 1-1 one, one Sapperlings. And then there's Kicker for 4. And if you pay the Kicker, you make 4 Sapperlings instead. So Scatter the Seeds is a 4-cost instant with Convoke, uh, and it says put 3 Sapperlings into play, but you can also pay that with Creatures. Uh, Flash Foliage is a 3-cost instant, uh, and it says put a 1-1 one, one Sapperling uh, blocking an attacking creature attacking you, and then you also draw a card. So this is great just to block a big guy without Trample, and then you can also draw off that. Then we have Tribal Unity. So Tribal Unity costs uh, green, 2, and X, and it says creatures of the chosen type get plus of X plus X till end of turn. So you can choose Sapperlings on that and it's quite an effective card. Then we have Spore Swarm. So Spore Swarm is an instant for four that says create three 1-1 one, one Sapperlings. Then we have Primal Growth. So Primal Growth is one green and two um, and it has a kicker, sacrifice a creature. So if you don't pay the kicker, it gets one basic land into the battlefield untapped. And if you do pay the kicker, it gets two. Next, we have Regrowth. So Regrowth is a sorcery, one green and one colorless. Um, and it just says, bring any card from your graveyard back into your hand, which is really useful for getting back uh, cards that you want from there. Speaking of putting cards in the graveyard, we have Grisly Salvage. Grisly Salvage says, reveal the top five cards of your library, and you can put a creature or a land card. Uh, this is just a really effective card for getting early lands or creatures you might need. Uh, and then we have Diabolic Tutor. So Diabolic Tutor costs two black black. And it says, search your library for a card and put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. Uh, just a great straight tutor card. Then we have Abrupt Decay, which is a classic green-black card. Abrupt Decay can't be countered, 
And then it says destroy target permanent with converted mana cost three or less. Very efficient in the early turns of EDH or even the last against counter spells. Then we have Sundering Vitu. Um, Sundering Vitu costs three and it says destroy target artifact or enchantment. And you can also pay convoke so you can tap your uh, smaller creatures to pay for it. Then we have Bone Splinters. So Bone Splinters is one black and it says as an additional cost, sacrifice a creature and destroy target creature. So just an effective removal spell that we can sacrifice tokens to. Then we have Golgari Charm, which is a pretty effective card. Um, so you can choose one. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Uh, destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature you control. Uh, and then we have Putrefy. So Putrefy says destroy target artifact or enchantment. It can't be regenerated. And that finishes up our instant sorceries. Moving on to our enchantments here. We have Lich's Mastery. So Lich's Mastery costs six and it's hexproof uh, legendary enchantment. You can't gain life this game, and whenever you gain life, you draw a card for each life you gained. And whenever you lose life, you either exile a card from your hand or a permanent from the battlefield or your graveyard. And then when it leaves the battlefield, um, you lose the game. So hopefully people won't be killing this, and then you can just sacrifice sapperlings or lands uh, and win the game with this card. Next, we have Keen Scent. So Keen Sense is an enchant creature card for one. Whenever enchanted creature deals damage to a player, uh, you draw a card. So we can throw this on Slimefoot, and when he deals damage with his Sapperling dying effect, uh, we can actually get, uh, draw some cards with that, which is really cool. Next, we have Fists of the Ironwood, which says enchant creature. Um, when it comes into the battlefield, make two Sapperlings, and then enchanted creature has Trample. We're more so playing this just for cheap Sapperling creator. Then we have Fungal Plots. So Fungal Plots um, is a two cost enchantment, and then you can pay two to exile a creature card from your graveyard and create a one one sapperling. And then you can also sacrifice two sapperlings and gain two life and draw a card. And then we have Night Soil. So Night Soil is a two cost double green enchantment and says uh, pay one colorless and remove any two creatures from uh, any, and then you can make a one one sapperling. And then we have Journey to Eternity. So Journey to the Eternity says Enchant Target Creature. When Enchanted Creature dies, return Journey to Eternity to the battlefield flipped. And then the flip side of this enchantment says uh, you can tap it to add one mana of any color. And then you can pay three black green and return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then we have Life and Limb. Life and Limb is a four cost enchantment. This card says all forests and sapperlings are 1-1 one, one sapperlings and forests in addition to their other types. So this makes all your forest sapperlings and all your sapperlings forest. Uh, and this actually combos with Spore Mound, and you can make infinite sapperlings with that. Then we have Growing Right of Ithamok. So Growing Right of Ithamok says when it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library and choose a creature. And then if you have four or more creatures at the end of your turn, uh, flip Growing Rights of Ithamok. And then the other side says... You can either add one green mana, or you can add one green for each creature you control. So this is almost like a budget Gaius Cradle if you can flip it over, and uh, with our tokens it's quite effective at uh, flipping it. Then we have Parallel Lives, which is a great card in token decks. Um, so whenever you would create a token, you instead create two of those tokens, which is amazing with Slimefoot and all our other token creator effects. Then we have Golgari Germination. Um, whenever a non-token creature you control would die, create a 1-1 Sapperling. Then we have Necrogenesis. So Necrogenesis is a green-black enchantment, and you can pay two and exile target creature card from a graveyard and create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling. Another great graveyard hate and uh, sapperling creator. And then lastly, we have Sapperling Cluster. Um, so Sapperling Cluster costs one and a green, and you can pay one and discard a card to create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling, and any player can use this effect, which is a pretty fun effect. All right, so moving on to our artifacts here. First, we have Whip of Erebos. So Whip of Erebos says creatures you control have lifelink, and then you can pay two black black and tap it. You can look at your graveyard and bring back a creature, and uh, it, it has haste, and then at the end of your turn, you exile it. And then we have Astronaut's Altar. So Astronaut's Altar says sacrifice a creature, add double colorless to your mana pool. This is just a great effect for sacrificing creatures or uh, ramping us up a little bit, especially with all our tokens. Then we have Obelisk of Erd, which is a six cost artifact. So Obelisk of Erd has Convoked, uh, so you can use your creatures to pay for it. And then uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. And, and creatures of the chosen type get plus two, plus two. Golgari Signet costs two, and you can pay one and tap it to add green black. So it's just a little bit of ramp and fixing. Vanquisher's Banner. Vanquisher's Banner costs five. And when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one, and then whenever you cast a creature of the chosen type, draw a card. 
We have Conda's Banner here, which is one of my favorite cards. It's a really beautiful art on it. Uh, it looks really nice in foil as well. Um, so Conda's Banner can only be attached to a legendary creature, and it costs two. Uh, and then creatures with the, uh, the chair color with the creature get plus one, plus one. And then creatures that chair type with the creature get plus one, plus one. Um, so we're usually using this to attach to slime foot. Um, so creatures would get plus one, plus one if they shared black or green. Uh, and then they'd also get plus one, plus one if they are a fungus. Then we have Skull Clamp, which is a classic EDH card. Really good in our deck. So Skull Clamp's a one cost artifact that costs one to equip. Target creature gets plus one, minus one. And then uh, whenever a creature would be put into a graveyard with this equipped, draw two cards. So you can attach this to a lot of our one ones as well as our one one sapperlings and draw a bunch of cards. That finishes our artifacts here. All right, now moving on to our lands. First, we have Unclaimed Territory. So when Unclaimed Territory enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, and you can add one colorless, or you can add one mana of any color uh, to pay for spells that are the chosen creature type. So usually on this, we choose Fungus. Then we have Mana Confluence. Um, so Mana Confluence says tap, pay one life, and add one color of any mana to your mana pool. Just a really effective card, and we do have 40 life in EDH. Uh, this one's really cool that I have here. This is a uh, Lenor Waste. It's actually signed by uh, Rob Alexander. Um, so uh, Lenor Waste just says add one colorless mana, and then you can tap it for green or black, and it deals one damage to you. Then I have Temple of Malady. So Temple of Malady enters tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, you get Scry 1, and then it also adds a green and a black. Then we have Golgari Guildgate, which I'm sure everybody knows. It just enters tapped and adds green or black. Jungle Hollow enters tapped and adds green or black, and you also gain one life. Golgari Rot Farm uh, enters the battlefield tapped, and you have to bounce a land back to your hand, and it adds green and a black. Uh, Woodland Cemetery enters tapped unless you control a forest or a swamp, and also adds green black. Overgrown Tomb is a shock land, I'm sure you all know. Uh, so it adds a green and a black, and it enters tapped unless you pay two life. Uh, and then we have Foul Orchards. So Foul Orchard is just a green black land that enters tapped. This is a Shizo Death Storehouse. It's actually signed by the artist in 2005, and uh, it's a little altered. Um, it has little UFOs instead of the beans. Really cool. Um, definitely one of my favorite cards that I own. So Shizo, uh, you could add black, and then if you pay black and tap it, uh, you can give a legendary creature Fear, which is a really good card in EDH. And then we have Memorial to Foley. Uh, so it enters the battlefield tapped, and you can three and a black and sacrifice it, um, and then return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. We have Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. So Urborg uh, says each land, you, each land is a swamp in addition to its other types. We have the green memorial, Memorial of Unity, enters tapped, and you can tap it for green. And then you can pay two and a green and sacrifice it. Um, and you can look at the top four cards for a creature uh, at the bottom at a random order. Grim Backwoods, um, you can add one colorless, or you can pay two green black, sacrifice a creature, and draw a card. Just a great utility land at Golgari. Then we have Reliquary Tower. So Reliquary Tower says you have no maximum hand size. You can add one colorless, or you can pay two and tap it to copy a land, uh, yours or your opponent's. Then we have Ash Barons. So Ash Barons uh, taps for a colorless, and it also has basic land cycling, so you can discard it and look for a forest or a swamp. So that finishes up with our utility lands. And then for our basics, uh, we just have five swamps, and then we have 12 forests. Uh, don't judge me for my basics, it's just kind of what I had lying around. Lastly, I do just want to go through some combos we have with the deck. Um, so our first combo here, we have Sporebound and Life from the Limb. Uh, so essentially, Sporebound says whenever a land would enter the battlefield, create a 1-1 Sapperling. And since Life from the Limb makes all your Sapperlings into forests and all your forests into Sapperlings and vice versa, um, whenever you play a forest, it'll also be a sapling, give you a sapling, which is also a forest, which gives you another one, and you can actually use this to create infinite sapperlings. And then we do just need a sacrifice effect to stop the loop, uh, which we have in Carry On Feeder, Utopia Micon, and Ashnod's Altar. And then another combo we have is with Slimefoot, and Ashnod's Altar, and Parallel Lives, um, as well as Pitiless Plunder can get us extra mana. Um, so essentially what we do is we create a token. Parallel Lives gives us two tokens. We sacrifice the Ashnod's Altar to create two mana, sacrifice the Ashnod's Altar to create two mana, uh, and then this gives us four mana to create a, another sapling, and we can do this to create infinite saplings and infinite mana. That pretty much finishes up uh, our EDH deck tech here. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different from what I usually do. Uh, I don't usually do paper deck text. I'm more in arena, but I tried to film this the best I could, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, but I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and thanks for tuning in. Later. Later.